What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, Javante Tank Davis and Earl the True Spence Jr., as you see here, we're going back and forth, and they exchanging words. Now, we know Errol Spence, Man Down Promotions, is promoting Javante Tank Davis's next opponent in undefeated lightweight star title contender Frank the Ghost Martin, who has 18 wins, no loss, no draw, 12 wins by way of knockout, 29 years of age, 5 foot 8 with a 68 inch arm reach, right? On paper, he's the toughest test for Javante Tank Davis. Now, if you know anything about this situation, you know that Errol Spence, Javante Tank Davis, and Adrian Broner were three peas in a pod, right? In a respectful manner, right? They were close. And they were hang hanging out together. And as they matured in life and in their careers, they kind of went their own separate ways. Now, we had a reunion between Adrian Brown and Javante Tank Davis recently, but they were always together. But when they was together, they were hanging out. They was partying, enjoying the fruits of their labor. And in between fights, not taking it serious. Then Errol Spence suffered a horrific car accident. Adrian Broner had um, long layoffs. And he was dealing with his own personal and mental issues. And Javante Tank Davis started to flourish. But at one point in time, Adrian Broner was the star of the group. Right, He was the top five pound-for-pound pound fighter of the group. Then he fell off. He took losses. He fell off. Then Errol Spence became that. And Errol Spence then, after unifying the belts, he was the, the biggest draw in, in boxing outside of Canelo Alvarez and obviously Floyd Mayweather. As far as pay-per-view sales go, he unified the belts September 2019. Then he suffered that horrific car accident. Didn't know if his career was going to get back on track or if he was ever going to fight again. And from that point on, it tailed off. And Javante Tank Davis took over the reins, right? And so recently now, Errol Spence, last July, he took the first loss of his career being dominated by the pound for pound number one fighter in the world, hands down, and Terrence Bud Crawford. So therefore, there's no... Uh, uh, shame in losing to Terrence Crawford. But here, they're going back and forth. And Errol Spence is telling Javante Tank Davis, you talk too much and you ain't fight nobody. Well, Javante Tank Davis said, I do fight people and I back it up. I do talk too much, but I can back it up. And then it got, obviously, more interviews and people are comparing the two careers, right? And um, Errol Spence was saying that, you know, Frank Martin for a better opposition, so on and so forth. And it got to the point where whose career is better, Errol Spence or, Ter or Javante Tank Davis? Because Frank Martin has yet to fight for a world title. He hasn't, he's unproven. He has the talent, the skill set, but he's still unproven. So they compare the two. And there is no comparison. Errol Spence has the better career. He's fought the better opposition compared to Javante Tank Davis, right? Javante Tank Davis fought solid opposition. Errol Spence has fought Hall of Famers are fighters on the brink of being Hall of Famers, okay, throughout his career. And Errol Spence was the cash cow. He was the pay-per-view superstar. He was touted as the person to take over for Floyd Mayweather and rival Canelo Alvarez as the biggest star in, in boxing. His downfall was that car accident. That set him back. He was out the ring for 14 months. We didn't know how he was going to look when he came back. Now, he did come back and beat Danny Garcia but he still wasn't himself. Then he was going to fight Manny Pacquiao. That was going to um, catapult him into that crossover superstar, that I that icon, that marquee fight with Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. But then he suffered a broken or detached retina that saw him out the ring again for another year. So it was another year and a half because he was already out the ring for an extensive period of time after the Danny Garcia fight. Now he was going to be out the ring again uh, going into the Pacquiao fight in in uh, August of 2021, then he suffered the eye injury that set him back. He was out the ring. Then Pacquiao lost to Yordana Ugas. He came back a year later, dominated Ugas, broke his nose, ribs, and orbital bone, but then was out again for over a year and a half going into the Terrence Crawford fight. So that set him back, and Ugas wasn't the marquee name to catapult him. 
if he would have fought Manny Pacquiao, he would have did a million pay-per-view buys with Manny Pacquiao. But that set him back. And he ended up fighting Ugas because Ugas stepped in for him and beat Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao is the bigger marquee name, right? So Errol Spence did 350,000 pay-per-views with uh, Mikey Garcia, four division world champion, first ballot Hall of Famer who was undefeated in top five pound for pound. He did 325,000 pay-per-view buys with Sean, Showtime Sean Porter in the unification bout. Uh, he did 320,000 pay-per-view buys with Danny Garcia. So up until Javante Tank Davis's last fight, April uh, 22nd of 2023, when he fought King Rod Ryan Garcia, that fight was enormous. It did 1.2 million pay-per-view buys, $23 million gate, the fifth highest gate in Las Vegas boxing history. And he, he earned over $30 million for the fight. But up until that point, his biggest pay-per-view was Rolando Roley Romero, right? Now, he did a gate of five million, but the Roley Romero fight was the biggest pay-per-view he did, and that Roley fight did 250,000 pay-per-view buys. And as far as competition-wise, he fought nobody on the level of Terrence Crawford, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia. Uh, he just have it, okay? Or Mikey Garcia fought in Javante Tank Davis' career. The best fighter he fought on paper, was Leo Santa Cruz and Yordanis and Yoriokis Gamboa. That's it. And Gamboa's a Hall of Fame, I believe. But that's about it. That's where the buck stops. But when you look at Errol Spence, he fought guys that Tank Davis fought on that level, like Chris Algieri, Lamont Peterson. Uh, he fought guys like that. His first title opportunity was Kel Brook in the UK for his first title opportunity in front of 30,000 fans. That was his first title opportunity. Then he fought Terrence Crawford, pound for pound, best fight in the world, and arguably making a case to be top five greatest fighters in history. Now he came up short, but he fought him. He fought Sean Porter, who's a first ballot Hall of, it should be a first ballot Hall of Fame, definitely a Hall of Famer and two time world champion. He fought Danny Garcia as a two division champion and more than likely a Hall of Famer. So he fought better opposition, period. But the car accident set him back. But that's all I got for y'all. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue, Blue Blood Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Blood Sports TV. All one word. That's all I got for y'all. I'm gone. Peace. <laughs>